I have asked Briston, a, um, Briston Heaven, who is the president of the Central Florida Christian Chamber of Bombers, to open us up in prayer. And uh, at that, after that prayer, we're going to turn it over to Brian and really think about what it means to shatter our limitations and breakthrough today. So, Briston, welcome. Thanks, Crystal. Thank you. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to sit and to listen and to learn of you. Thank you, Father, that each and every one of us here is here by divine appointment. When you created us, you saw this day. Each moment was recorded in your book. And so, Father, we just want to say thank you for the opportunity to hear your voice and to learn of you. Fill us with your wisdom and understanding in knowing you better. Grant a special auction to Brian as you depend on your Holy Spirit, as you work through him, Lord Jesus, in building up the hearts and minds of your people. And let us leave here today knowing that it was good, knowing that you were glorified, and knowing that we can continue to work our business towards growth. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Well, Brian, I don't know if you even need an introduction. Um, I think everybody's on here because they know you, they've heard about you, or they've read about you, and they're excited to hear what you've got to share today. So, my friend, we're turning it over to you, and I've got my notebook here ready to go. Awesome. Thank you, Crystal. I really appreciate it, and uh, appreciate all of you guys joining. And it's... Um, Anytime I get to do this, it is a, it is a uh, privilege for me. I was thinking about you all today, praying for our time together, and um, we're really in some exciting times in human history. I mean, you want to talk about an opportunity to put on display the just the good news, and 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 you know, just like when you go to that jeweler. I know when I go with my wife, I've got three daughters as well, and you go in and. That jeweler is very strategic and smart. He has the right lighting and he has the right backdrop. Uh, so he can put that that diamond right in front of that black backdrop and put on display it's all of its brilliance. And, and we've got, got such an incredible opportunity um, to put on display just the brilliance of God's kingdom right now. And being able to do that through our, our hands, our skill set, everything that we've been called to do, it's just an amazing privilege uh, to be able to do that. And I, I, my season of life, I've devoted my season um, for the rest of my life. I've been asking God, show me what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to make an impact. And it's what I'm doing now. And it's it's helping people, whatever format that is, coaching, helping people develop, helping people grow. You cut me open. I'm a transformation junkie. I love seeing people um, get what they're supposed to get, but also see what's inside of them get fully activated. You know, Peter, in his letter to the church, he said, everything needed for life and godliness in second Peter chapter one, verses two through four, he says, everything that's needed for life and godliness is basically already in us through our knowledge, our growth and our development, our knowledge of who Jesus is and walking with him through the Holy spirit. So, um, for me in moments like this, um, the, some of you have heard me speak before some, many of you haven't, uh, this is probably going to be more about catching a few things than it is about teaching. Um, I know this is an education uh, series, but honestly, I think knowing, uh, figuring out over these years what I'm good at, what I'm not good at, uh, usually it's it's helping leave an impact in certain moments of time and, and hopefully imparting something. So hopefully you can catch this. I know we're recording it. You can go back maybe later and look at some of the practicals, but we're talking about breakthrough and um, I don't know if this is good or not, but my whole life, um, even especially after coming to know Jesus, after my rookie season, um, I was playing with the Jacksonville Jaguars, had an incredible rookie season, really a breakout season, uh, came from a really small college. Uh, my, my story is one of kind of overcoming the odds, uh, being overlooked at different times and, and at the right moments, opportunities opening up and just having the courage to say yes. And even before I, I knew the Lord, he put something in me that was always about, man, when an opportunity shows up, my job's to be ready when it shows up and when it shows up, go all in. And I've tried to do that. And then 
after my rookie season, uh, having good success with the Jaguars, I got drafted really high in the second round. There was a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure. Um, I, I was uh, newly married, um, and we were expecting our first child. Fast forward to May of 1996. I've got everything you could ever want. I've got power, privilege, prestige, everything that I've been trained to aim for, I had gotten. And yet I, internally and in the areas that it should have mattered most, I was, I was failing miserably. I felt completely bankrupt. And May 1996, May 13th, um, I'm out on a golf course with my wife. She's nine months pregnant, due at any moment with our first baby. I am internally freaking out about becoming a dad. I was I already knew I was a bad husband. And I was convinced my starting point with being a dad was convinced that I was going to be a failure. And um, we're out golfing one day, and I had a Wilson glove deal. One of the perks of being in the NFL, you get certain deals and certain gear. And so they would send me golf clubs. And I got a new set of clubs, and I'd been working on my game that offseason. was getting decent because my timing was getting – better and better. And um, with new clubs, man, threw my timing off, threw my game off. Before you know it, I'm melting down on hole six, not just melting down, literally breaking golf clubs, throwing a massive fit. Here I was a 6'3", 250-pound middle linebacker, just losing it on the golf course. Well, uh, needless to say, my wife was embarrassed. There was other people around. Uh, She gets in the golf cart literally leaves me on hole six. Some of you ladies on the call will respect this greatly. She leaves me on hole six and uh, I'm forced to walk back to the clubhouse, walk back to my car, go back to our home. And uh, she had locked herself in the bathroom and refused to come out unless I agreed to go to a Bible study with her. And I'd never been to a Bible study. I didn't know what a Christian really was. I just thought they had really weird taste in music to be straight up with you. Uh, I, I didn't know and understand that whole world. Uh, I thought Jesus was kind of a joke, honestly. Um, I thought people used him kind of as a crutch. I had all those built-in excuses that most people have. And uh, for me, I needed to see something that worked. I needed something that could break through. And so uh, to get out of the doghouse, I ended up agreeing to go to the Bible study with her. It was at Mark Burnell's house, our quarterback, And driving over, I'm sweating, I'm anxious, I'm fearful. I have no idea what I'm walking into. Fast forward, we get to the house. Five different cars are there. They're the people. I was shocked because the people I ran and partied with, all of them with their wives and girlfriends, they all showed up the same night. And so I pulled up and go, man, I know what we do when we get together. Maybe Bible study is code word for party. Um, And so I, I walk into the house and There's a guy there from Texas, and honestly, we're sitting in this living room, and I can only describe it, you know, at the time I didn't use these words, but now it's like it was an encounter. It was an encounter with with God, and uh, the gentleman preaching talked about Jesus in such a way it was like he knew him, Um, and then when he broke down the gospel, uh, my heart just was broken, Uh, simultaneously looking at all the stuff I had done. I was under guilt, shame, condemnation, all that, depression, anxiety, fear, trying to manage that in the middle of pressure with the career I had as a football player. And, you know, all that stuff swirling, um, he began to talk about forgiveness and breakthrough as it relates to that. And he said, if you want Jesus, stand up. So I just stood up to my feet, not knowing what I was saying yes to. Again, it kind of goes back to those, those moments of breakthrough are all about when an opportunity shows up. Um, being willing to go all in with your yes and being willing to go all in. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what I was committing to. I just knew I went up to him crying. I said, I don't know about anything else, but I need this Jesus you talked about. I need him really, really bad. And I said, what do I do? He goes, pray. And I, I kind of, I was crying, but I kind of laughed I'm like, man, you're the professional. Now pray for me. And he goes, no, just, just what's on your heart. And so I, what came out of me was, Lord, this better be real. This better be so real that I don't go back. Because if I go back to how I was, um, this ain't going to work well at all. I was already suicidal in some of my thoughts. I knew what that meant. And so the peace of God hit me. I felt this breakthrough. And that's all I can describe it as now. Years later, it was a tangible sense 
that whatever was on me was not on me anymore. It was this tangible sense that the unrest and the chaos inside of me, it's now gone. Something superior came in and broke through the stuff that I couldn't break through in my own energy, my own skill set, my own effort. And it's why I do what I do now. It's why I play middle linebacker. I mean, of all positions that God put me in, my position on the defense was literally to break through things and, and sometimes break through for others to make the play, sometimes break through and drill ball carriers and dislodge the ball from their bodies. Sometimes it was using my head as a violent instrument of war. Whatever it required, it was, it was all about breakthrough. And, and after my football career, I ended up transitioning into ministry, helped plant churches. Again, it's about I love starting things. I love breaking through things. And I've learned the art and the grace of, of follow through. But really, my specialty is, is breakthrough. And I didn't ask for it. Everybody's uh, usually when people have prayed over me, they, they usually see that. I don't know if any of you on the call have ever gotten these, you know, what they call prophetic words. I didn't know what that was. But from the very start, I got a prophetic word like three weeks after I came to know Jesus. I'm still cursing like a sailor, drinking like a sailor. I don't have, you know, I don't have any clue. I'm just, I just know I'm saved. I just know something's broken off of me. And very, right out of the gate, I see this on your life. You're going to help people break through. You're going to do this. this, this. And so I have finally at 51 gotten really, really comfortable with going, okay, here's what I bring to the table. Breakthrough. <laughs> I don't know how to necessarily define it or package it, but I will try to do so today. And so in the limited time we have to get, I just want to give you a backdrop because I have a feeling we're going to do this again at some point down the road and maybe we'll be doing life together. Who knows what God's going to do in our lives. But I wanted to share my heart because I know what it's like to be under massive amounts of weight and, and, and that's made up of shame, guilt, condemnation, and to feel like things are impossible and to see those things shift in a moment of time. And there's nothing better than that. And so breakthrough is a mindset so if you, if you are taking any notes, breakthrough is definitely a mindset. Um, it, it's something I had in me even before I knew Jesus. It's that thing that God puts in us. It's a part of our inheritance. I would just say it like that. It's a part of our, our spiritual DNA. He puts something in us that that is this mindset of when something impossible shows up, I want to I want to go for it. Now, through the course of time, time, through the course of disappointment, through the course of real life struggle and self-inflicted wounds, sometimes we lose that sense of I'm going to go for it. But all of us have this in us. And that's what I love coaching is because all I do a lot is just ask people tons of questions because my goal for those I'm coaching is to allow the individuals to become aware of, of not only where they're not, but become massively aware of what they possess and who they are. And if I can help them uncover that, usually everything needed for the breakthrough many times is already inside of them. They just had either forgotten about it or they had left it behind or it's buried under a lot of garbage. But at the end of the day, breakthrough really is a mindset, but it's also a skill set. So number two, breakthrough is not just a mindset. It's a skill set. It's something that you can actually develop in the form of follow through. Breakthrough is one thing, but then learning how to follow through, you know, there's the battle to kind of get the ground. And then there's the battle. How do I keep that ground that, that God's given me? How do I not just hold on to it and not just white knuckle it, but how do I not only keep that ground, but then keep, keep moving forward. So I'm going to get some more ground spiritually. And so it's this idea of mindset. It can become a skill set. But what's really cool is when you learn how to walk in the lifestyle of breakthrough, because again, I don't think it's just something that I carry. I think every single person on this call carries the capacity to walk in breakthrough. Uh, to where it becomes an asset. You know, that's what's cool, right? When you're an entrepreneur, when you're getting stuff started, when you're launching business, man, you've got this mindset it takes, but then you've developed this skill set, right? This set of skills that enable you to become successful at what you're doing, then you can become an asset. And the ultimate goal uh, of, of at least what I want you guys to grab hold of today is that like, is 
as we learn to grow and develop and, and learn how to rise and break through, we become a serious asset in the kingdom of God, which means we become a serious threat to the kingdom of darkness. And now more than ever, how badly do we need to see breakthrough in, in people's lives, to see breakthrough in our businesses, to see tangible breakthrough all around us. And so when we talk about mindset, let's just drill down into that just for a little bit, because mindset's a big deal. Um, basically, it's like wherever you, wherever your mind is set regularly, wherever you set your mind regularly and habitually, that is what develops your mindset. And so when you look at Romans chapter eight, I'm just going to read a few verses. You can write this down. Romans chapter eight, verses five, verse five. Uh, it says, for those who live according to the flesh, they set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on the things of the Spirit. Okay, and he goes, for the, to set the mind on the flesh, there's a fruit of that. He says, that's death. That's not good. But to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. And so it's like God's... I'm a simple theologian. I, I call it meathead theology, line, you know, middle linebacker theology. Satan bad, God good, okay? Mindset on the flesh, death. Mindset on the spirit, life and peace. And God's so cool. He's a great dad. You know, I've learned, I've got seven kids, by the way. So I've, you know, God obviously restored our marriage. We've been married 27 years, seven kids later. Um, the, the best title that somebody ever gave me was your prolific breeder. And so I stand on that. I, I, if there's nothing else, I've been a prolific breeder. And, and so with that, with seven different kids, I've learned from the girls. I, I've always apologized to our oldest because I look at her. I'm like, I just want to say, I'm sorry. You were our experiment. You were the one we tried everything on and saw what would stick and what wouldn't stick. And so you can overcomplicate it. You can make it so difficult. God's real, real simple. He's like, hey, life or death? You got a choice here. And what's cool, even in the midst of chaos and darkness and struggle and barriers and limitations, the enemy wants to create this illusion that you don't have choices. And if I can get you buried under this disillusionment, this sense that, that things are impossible, get you to become this victim of circumstance, so to speak, most victims get backed into a corner and they feel like they don't have choices. Here's what's amazing about breakthrough. It's the perspective and the mindset. I've got tons of choices at my disposal. And 1 Corinthians 2.16, what's really amazing when you look at that whole chapter, it's all about like how, how do you discern the things of the kingdom or the spirit? How do you discern how does that work in this world we're in? And at the very last verse of first Corinthians two, Paul says this, you have the mind of Christ. So what if you woke up every single day, not in spiritual theory, but in spiritual fact, you woke up every day and you woke up to this reality. I, I have the mind of Christ. I've been given the spirit of Christ. I've been given the Holy Spirit. I am like this habitation where the spirit dwells. And in that, I have the mind of Christ. So that means when I'm walking through life and I'm looking at situations, Jesus was, I love reading the gospels because you're reading about this fully surrendered human, right? Who didn't regard equality with God, something to be grabbed onto for entitlement, but he's, he's one of us. He didn't just come for us. He came as us. And as us, he leads a bunch of others of us. And he's taking them on this three-year journey of giving them a mindset shift and a skill set development. And, and if you could look at breakthrough, really anything, it's mindset and then skill set. How do I, first, I got to get in sync with the mind of Christ, well, how do I do that? Romans 12, one through two says a good starting place is to take your physical body. That's Romans 12, one and two. He says, give your physical body. Here's what I want you to do with that physical body. I want you to take the members of the body. Paul talks about this in Romans six. He says, 
Give your hands, your eyes, your ears. What are the members of your body? Give your brain. He says, give your body as a living sacrifice. Okay. And then you can do that. He says, because you're holy and acceptable. And so the mindset of Jesus Christ to have the mind of Christ, it's, it's your starting point because your starting point usually gives you the indicator of where your outcome is going to be. Right? So if you start your day with the mindset of I am 100% fully accepted. I am a brand new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, right? If, it's, it's like if I start there, then my prayer life is different than if I started feeling rejected or feeling behind or feeling like I didn't do this well. Or maybe you're going through a family issue right now. You need breakthrough. And your prayers, you're finding it hard to pray in faith because you're starting from this place of feeling like you're you're in debt or you mess something up. See, Jesus was a beautiful example of someone who could wake up every day, look at impossible situations, take people into impossible situations, do crazy stuff like lay his hands on lepers and sick people. Everything his culture said, don't do. See, Jesus, I love him so much because he was a disruptor. I love entrepreneurs. I love great business people because I love people that want to disrupt the normal, want to break into stuff, kind of mess things up and create, you know, this, this sense of need for what you carry. Jesus created disruption intentionally. He shook things up intentionally because he was trying to take his disciples through this journey of what the mindset could be like. And so Jesus, when he would look at something that others would go, man, that's impossible. He had this mindset, wait a minute, all things are possible with my father. He didn't wake up with this deficiency inside of him that felt like he was playing catch up. And to have the mindset of breakthrough, it's, it's like you have to embrace. It's a radical. I'm telling you, I work with high-level business people, high performers. This is the toughest thing for them to embrace. When I show up to God every day, I'm already holy. I'm already acceptable. I'm just going to pause. They struggle with this idea that even though my yesterday's resume proves that I, I'm not holy. I did some things that weren't holy. I did some things that caused friction in my relationships. Maybe as a leader of, of teams, I said some things that, so it, it takes a lot of courage. That's why breakthrough is a mindset first, because you can't break through the, the things in your life. Like let's say a marriage issue. You can't break through your marriage issue if you're approaching the throne of God from a place of I'm broken, I'm not okay, I'm not accepted. When you know you are accepted, when you know you, even though you have brokenness in you, you're not broken, but there are demonstrations at times that prove that you had a previous existence before Jesus. There's always proof in our life that there was a previous existence, right? And Jesus' solution wasn't just self-improvement. It was death. He killed something so that he could resurrect us. And so I, I hope I'm making sense. It's hard to grasp sometimes, but it's this sense of reality. It's this sense of identity that goes, man, if he's for me, if he sees me through the lens of Jesus, See, because the father is not relating to you based upon your deficiencies. Your father's relating to you based upon the sufficiency of Jesus. Okay? He's not answering your prayer as a pauper that is begging for deliverance. He's answering your prayer because you already are delivered. It's the difference between living from breakthrough instead of trying to get it. I have, after 51, after 20 some odd years of serving Jesus, 51 years of life, I'm finally at the place where I'm going, every day I wake up, even though trouble is on the horizon, even though there's limits and things I got to break through, even though there's stuff that isn't going quite like I thought, even though 
he said certain things about me, but my circumstances are telling me something radically different. Even in spite of all of that, I have to have something every day, a skill set, if you will, every day where I pull away from chaos and I develop this mindset that if he is for me, who can be against me? Greater is he who's in me than he that's in this world. David, at the high, at the point of his career, when he had been told he was going to be king, he's on the run. He's running from King Saul. He makes horrible decisions. This is another reason why I love David. He, he is psychotic. He's very bipolar. He's all over the place. He talks trash. I love David because he, t- think about Goliath. You uncircumcised Philistine. I won't go into any more depth. He goes right to the heart of the matter. He talks trash. He brings it. But he also struggled with depression. He struggled with fear. He made horrible decisions out of anxiety. So much so, 1 Samuel chapter 30, he's about to become king. He doesn't even realize it fully, but he's about to become king. And he he made a huge heir. All of his best men, all their families, all their goods, everything got stolen. Now his best men are looking to him as the leader and going, we want you dead. We don't just want to like vote you out. We actually want to stone you to death. Now that, that my friends, is a tough moment as a leader. And I've been there. I've been there with my own family looking at me going, what did you do? Why did you lead us here? But what was cool about David in verse six, it says before he ever dealt with his issues of like, I got to figure out what direction do we need to go before you try to figure out the direction you need to go. You need to deal with your discouragement issue. And that's what David did. He, he strengthened himself in the Lord. He went back to the thing. It was worship. It was prayer. It was what second Corinthians 10, three through five says part of this skill set of breakthrough is developing this ability to take thoughts captive. Second Corinthians 10, three through five says, even though we walk according to the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. And he says, because the weapons of our warfare are not flesh. They're divinely powerful for destroying strongholds. And he says, here's what we do. We take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And Siri's trying to help me. Um, and so what does that mean? What does that mean to take thoughts captive? David, and I'll just give you this Psalm, Psalm 103. David is probably sitting there with God. Everybody wants to destroy him and kill him. He's made, he's going through his own self-condemning thoughts. You know what he does? He takes out whatever instrument he has and he begins to sing. The weapons of our warfare are not flesh. We have supernatural, we have a supernatural arsenal. See, all the bad habits and bad ingrained patterns in our brain, all these neural pathways that that we've developed over all these years, it it can't just be I got to gut it out and figure it out and renewing my mind is I better do this and I better do that. There's got to be something that comes in that is supernatural. There's got to be something that comes in and goes, and the word of God is living and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. And so for you and I, what if we did what David did? Psalm 103, he just starts going, bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of his benefits. He pardons all of your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. He withholds no good thing from those that he loves. Like he just starts going down this whole list of every single benefit of being with the Father. And this is a guy that didn't have the Holy Spirit in him. Imagine what happens when you and I, in the midst of our turmoil and our chaos, we withdraw from that system that's creating anxiety. We pull away from it. We spend some time. And David isn't even praising God. He's speaking to his own soul. He's making his soul confess to things that don't make sense in the natural. 
He's making his own mind, his will, and his emotions get into alignment. See, I, I believe the kingdom of God is an aligned kingdom. And so he, David is figuring out his soul feels out of alignment. Any of you ever go to the chiropractor? Who, did anybody just a quick raise of the eyebrow or hand? Now, now, chiropractors are simultaneously freaky and liberating all at the same time because it's it's enjoyable when they're working on like a lower extremity. But when they start going up towards the neck, man, I still get a little, I'm like, man, if this goes badly, I'm, I'm done. There's, there's this thing, right? There's this like, it's this, it's like, I know I need it, but man, what, what if, and the, the things of God and the things of breakthrough, they're a lot like that. It's this, it's uncomfortable. It, it's to get back into alignment is so crucial though. And, and, and if we could just, now again, I'm not able to cover everything today. We've got just a few minutes left, but if I can get you to dare to get your starting point. The starting point with breakthrough is everything. If I could dare to get you to start at the right place, because if you could start from the place of whole, W-H-O-L-E, start from the place of accepted, start from the place of beloved, start from the place of new creation. Your prayers are different versus starting from the place of deficiency. It takes courage to every day to believe the gospel about your life. It just does. And breakthrough is being able to take all that he said about us, especially in the seasons of shaking. You know, you read the account of when the first Chuck Yeager, the first guy to break through the sound barrier, every other pilot did what he did. They came, they flew a certain speed. They kept accelerating, kept accelerating, kept accelerating. But then when they got to like 0 0.98, 0 0.97, 0 0.98, 0 0.99 near Mach 1, their, 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 their planes would start shaking and they would all of a sudden the shaking would overwhelm them to where they would either pull out or crash. And Chuck Yeager was the first one that saw the shaking as possibility. And what if you and I were able to wake up every single day and even in the midst of shaking and chaos and turmoil, it's a lot like when I stepped on that football field. It was this sense, man, if I walked out on that field going, man, if I, if, if I tried to avoid collisions, I would not have had a career. I would have been cut. They would have brought somebody else because my job was literally to, to not avoid collision. It was to go into collision. I think sometimes we're called to like, look at all the shaking and go, man, that's an invitation. Like, what if you had the mindset, even if it was the struggles you're having are because of you, what if you could recalibrate and go, even in spite of this, I'm still a new creation. Old things have still passed away. I'm not playing catch up. I'm going to approach the throne of grace with boldness. Boldness in the Greek means freedom of speech. I'm coming to the throne with boldness. He's, and that's Hebrews 4, 16, right? He says, approach with boldness. To do what? To receive grace and to find mercy in a time of need. Breakthrough is not something we're discovering or going after. Breakthrough is something we're uncovering and drawing near to and living from. You already have his mercy. You already have his grace. Breakthrough is actually being able to take that and not just utilize it, but to take all these other thoughts and bring them into the captivity, bring them into subjection to the superior reality of who Jesus is. Breakthrough is about a superior reality coming into an inferior reality and shattering the illusion of impossibility. Does that make sense? And so, uh, Crystal, I'm going to do something. I'm going to send you some of the notes that I wrote for our time together. It'll have some bullets on it. You know, just so people could have, I don't know if there's a way to send these out to, to people. I also gave you one of the chapters. I'm writing a book right now called Worthy Opponents and how God will intentionally leave worthy opponents in our path to develop us and train us because, you know, God's just as glorified by your development as he is by your deliverance. And, and we need to embrace the pathway of development 
And so, Crystal, if there's a way to do that, and then I'll just say this, and I'm going to be quiet and, and let you guys digest a little bit, is when you're faced with the things that stir up anxiety, most people start going through what they don't have. They start right. They start going through. We don't have this when they were when they were going to feed these fifteen thousand people, right? Jesus, is like you guys feed them. They're going. They pull their pockets out. They're like we don't have enough. And Jesus said something crazy. He's like, "Well, what do you have?" And I just want to encourage all of you. Like, in the, the breakthrough requires this this mindset and this skill set of being able to go. I'm going to stop worrying about what I don't have. And I'm just going to go all in with what I do have. And I'm telling you, that's when the supernatural starts breaking through in your life. It's that willingness to go all in with what I do have and not fret about what I'm not, what I don't have. I wish it was harder than that. I wish there was some secret sauce, but breakthrough is a mindset, a skill set, and it could definitely become an asset as we learn to walk in that. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, can we get, yeah, I'm already seeing the hand clapping over here. This, uh, I think I had an appetizer, my lunch, dessert, and then some extra here. I have a lot to digest. Brian, this was fantastic. And you're doing a lot. You talked a lot about the supernatural and our ability to see through the spirit, spiritualize the mind of Christ. And I think that's a great segue into our upcoming conference that we have in April of 2024, Spiritual World Citizens Doing Business from the Inside Out. And that is literally what that conference is about, is how does God see you? How are you going to approach business and live a life and operate a business only explainable by God? And it's doing exactly what Brian talked about. It's not starting from where we might feel, but elevating ourselves so that we can experience breakthrough. Brian, I hope you get a chance to go back and see the chat because it is on fire. You've, you've stirred up a lot of stuff and people. Uh, one of the questions that did come through there was how do people get a hold of you and how can they connect with you outside of this? Is that something you want me to also send out or can you share? Do you have LinkedIn? We know you're busy with your I, seven children. I, yeah, so I have intentionally flown under the radar for a long time. And and as a result, I'm playing some catch up. I'm entering into a season now where I'm I'm not doing that. I do have LinkedIn. I'm I'm I do have that. So you can connect with me uh there. I, I don't even know where to look for that other than Brian Schwartz. Um I can give you my email. Email would be great. Um I'm on Instagram. Again, I'm sporadic and spotty with all this, but I am actually working a plan, Crystal, just so you know, over the next several months before the end of the year, I'm going to have all this streamlined, but um, they could just, if you've got my email, Crystal, that's a way to get a hold of me as well. Okay. Okay. I'll put it in with the information. I want to get you guys excited about Brian's book because um, it's very rare that an author would say, I'm going to pre-release a chapter of my book. This is chapter four, I believe. Is that is that what we're looking yeah, at here? Yeah, chapter it's, four it's of your chapter book. Chapter four. It's called Right Sizing God. Right Sizing God is chapter four. The book is called uh, Four. Let's see. A uh, uh, worthy of opponents. Worthy opponents. Yeah, worthy and opponents. I want to. We're, I want to get you guys excited about what's going to be in this book and what you're going to get as a result of being on this call today. Um, and I just want to read just one little excerpt from this book. And then we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and, and talk to you about the U.S. Christian Chamber. We're going to close in prayer, but we're going to stay open these last 15 minutes. If anybody can stick with us past one o'clock, Brian has graciously agreed to make himself available for whoever can stay that wants to ask questions and just kind of work through some stuff that you're working through as you've heard him. But here's an excerpt from his book that is coming out. Um, it is called Worthy Opponents. He says, look, I get it. Life can toss some nasty stuff at us. Maybe you're facing a Goliath-sized problem that's stomping all over your dreams. Maybe you're wandering in a wilderness of confusion wondering if there's a promised land ahead. But here's a potential game changer. 
when we magnify God, not our problems, we start to see those giants and deserts from God's perspective. We serve a God who parts seas, shuts the mouth of lions, and raises the dead. Think about that. We serve a God who parts seas, shuts the mouth of lions, and raises the dead. He is for us. Then who or what can stand against us? So you guys are going to want to pick up this book um, and really just learn what it means to break through and to continue to work through some of this mindset, skill set. Uh, Brian, I love how you put this all together uh, today in this talk, and it's really exciting. I can see lots of light bulbs going off, um, and my I've got two pages of notes, so hopefully others were taking notes, too. I never introduced myself. For those that don't know me, I'm Crystal Parker. I have the, the blessing to be able to lead this organization, just like Brian was talking about, about really taking dominion over your life with God. Nothing can stop us. We have work to do in this nation as well. And with the U.S. Christian Chamber of Commerce, we're bringing together an army of people that want to take back this nation, take back the mountain of economics. And we want to be able to see kingdom commerce spread across the U.S. and across the world. So that's what we do at the U.S. Christian Chamber of Commerce. You can check us out on our site, uschristianchamber.com. If you're not a member, please hit that join button and become a member. And today, as a special offer, for those of you that are on the call that are members, and those of you that become members today that are with us live, I'm going to put everybody into a drawing to receive one. Um, one person will be drawn to get the expo ticket for 2024. That's a $425 ticket to the U.S. Christian Business Expo and National Conference Spiritual World Citizens. Come join us in Orlando, Florida, April the 18th and 19th. And if you already have your ticket, then you're going to have an extra one to share if your name is chosen. So please join us uh, in this work that we're doing to unite the kingdom of God across the nation. Brian's going to stick around with us, and so we're going to join him in just a moment. But before we do that, uh, this person keeps just popping up on my screen, and it's Michael Hardigan. Michael, would you bless us and pray for us as we close this and just ask God to continue to do let this work and this word just continue to work in all of our lives and our businesses? I'd be happy to. Let's go ahead and bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together as people of faith. You knew we were going to be on this call before we did. Lord, we just thank you for Brian's words of encouragement, his story, the example he is setting by honoring you, God, which allows us to learn from him as well. We are just so excited about the U.S. Christian Chamber of Commerce and how this is spreading throughout the nation with Crystal's leadership. And so we want to recognize her as she honors you as well, God. We just once again, thank you. We lift this up to you, Lord, and we ask you to continue to honor and bless those people who are on the call today who run Christian businesses or Christian nonprofits as you continue to guide us in our work, our calling for you, Lord. We say this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Well, stick around with us, guys. We're going into Q&A at this point. Thanks, Michael, for praying. Um, I want to also thank our virtual ambassador today that did not know she had that title until she showed up and I said, help, my computer's not working. I am in Ohio. I'm going to be joining the West Ohio Christian Chamber of Commerce for their quarterly event tonight. And Jacqueline Lynn jumped in and uh, took that virtual ambassador role. I think she did a great job putting everybody in breakout rooms. Before we open this up for questions, uh, feel free just to unmute yourself, come on in, and either you can share a question that you might have for Brian, or if there's something that really hits you, um, something that made a real big impact for you today, would love to hear, hear that because that might be a great reminder for somebody else. So for the next 15 minutes, let's just have some time together. When you go ahead and say what, you know, when you ask your question or say your takeaway, just say, hey, I'm Crystal Parker. I'm with the U.S. Christian Chamber of Commerce. 
and then share. That way we know what kind of businesses are represented and what, or nonprofits and um, continue to learn more about each other. All right, the floor is yours. Um, I'll go ahead and kick it off. I'm Crystal Parker. I'm, uh, no, no, no. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and and I am an author and business ghostwriter, and I, I introduced myself already. Um, probably the biggest takeaway that I got that I wrote down was I'm going to stop worrying about what I don't have and go all in with what I do have. And, and I think that that's something we're never going to be in that perfect place where we have everything we need exactly with all the you know proverbial ducks lined up in a row and and all that we're just never going to be there so we just we just got to go with what we've got because it's it's enough god is going to make it enough as long as we're doing what he wants us to do amen I, I will just um, give a little uh, context around that statement. Um, there were different, a few different times where there were some financial things that came up. And being in the nonprofit space, you, you can sometimes go, man, I'm going to reach out to so-and-so. I'm going to see if, if they could help out with this thing. And, and then the Lord would, he, he would be like, okay, um, you could do that and that would be fine. I give you permission to do that, but I want you to take a peek at what you have already stored up that you've been trying to preserve, you know, and, and that's tricky when, and he goes, all right, you see that now the world says, do it this way, put a bin up, store it in there, but that's not my kingdom. My kingdom is I've already given you what you, you need. Are you willing to distribute it? And I think the key to what we're talking about is God doesn't need multipliers. I think we've embraced the idea that we got to, even in our businesses, sometimes we're like, we want to multiply, we want to multiply. No, the truth is he needs distributors. He needs people that he can trust to be the deliverer of the goods. Um, and then we, we truly do make a way for his multiplication, just like in the feeding of the 4,000, the feeding of the 5,000. Both times he took them intentionally into a place of vulnerability to where they were wanting to offload their problems to somebody else. Let's just send them away. Let's just give them to somebody else. And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. Uh, he taught them a few things. I'm going to teach you a couple of things. Number one, all, you, all I need is what you already have. Go all in with that. And we'll see what happens. I'll multiply it. And then what's cool about that, you get to, you get to participate in the distribution of the multiplication. And so maybe for some of you um, in your businesses right now, um, Take a, take a good look at uh, how you're doing at distribution. And I don't mean that in the physical context, but like spiritually, emotionally, how you're doing in the distribution business with your people, your clients, people that matter most to you and your families. Um, and are you giving your best? Are you going on with what you do have or are you being consumed with maybe what you what you don't have? That's just a, just a little context of why I said that. That's good. Uh, we've got a couple of hands up, and so Randy, unfortunately, there's two against one, so we'll go with the funks first. Uh, I see Raymond over there, kind of, at least his shoulder, so Leslie and Raymond Funk, Three Court Marriage. Yes, hi. First, I'm Crystal, thank you for bringing Brian on, and Brian, thank you for being here today. I mean, this was just really, um, you know, timely for for me, because um I know personally, I've been fighting the discouragement for for a few months, and I have felt that breakthrough recently with probably within the last month and getting my mindset, exactly everything that you said, you know, in that place that God is for us, who can be against us. He's the one who gave us this vision. And, and so, um, Really today, I love how you said, you know, shatter the illusion of impossibility. Like, just yeah. come on. I mean, everything, it just, 
thank you for everything here today. It's just uh, additional encouragement. I'm going to need to kind of go through some of these things that I wrote down that came out of your mouth that <laughs> um, to help, you know, build that stronger mindset foundation of that victory. And it's interesting because we're all about marriage. And I always say and and counsel and coach wives, you know, you're fighting from a place of victory, not for it. And that's exactly what you said. And I've experienced that in my own life. So it's just being able to take what God has done before in a different area of your life and apply it to the struggle for today. Amen. That's really good. Yeah. Thank you good. for your vulnerability and, in your heart. Yeah. That's amazing. Crystal, there's, there's this thing I've been examining. Um, it's this been looking at David's life a lot lately and it's the whole now, not yet. It's like he has this great future. He's been anointed King but it's not yet. And that's where we usually see this, this opportunity uh, for both the enemy to come in and, and lie and discourage or the opportunity to see the Holy spirit come in and encourage it's, it's simultaneously holding on to the promises that, you know, God has spoken over your life, his, his original intention and juxtaposing that against the reality of your circumstance and it's in that space that, that that's the choice we make of like who we're going to let um, contribute to the narrative. It, it, it's easy to let the enemy try to rewrite the script and contribute to your narrative versus standing and letting the Holy Spirit come in. And it, it, listen, spiritual pep talks are awesome. And I totally get it. Like I, I'm an inspiration guy. I'm a let's go, guys. Let's go. You know, let's rise up. The, the reality is I'm not saying anything. Don't, don't ignore your reality. Don't deny your reality. I just say this. You don't have to put up with it either. You can bring the superior reality into the reality you're in and at least give the opportunity to the Holy spirit to, 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 to rewrite the narrative or to inject his inject his context into your narrative right now, because before you know it, that's the hard part about breakthrough. Usually in the worst shaking, that's when you pull out. And Chuck Yeager was the guy that said, I'm going to ride this thing out, see what happens. And, and I know that's not a very good theologically, you know, concise statement, but I think there's a theology that says when the shaking is the greatest, that is really the time that you need to stay in the flight path and not just pull out. Oh, so good. It's a good word. Thank you. This is this is gold right here. This recording is going to be on replay for me. Uh, Randy, what you got? I thought Jennifer was ahead of me. Uh, I but, have you up next. Uh, okay, that's fine. I'll, no, ahead of you. I, yeah. No, I'm. I'm. Come I'm, on I'm, in. I am absolutely ready, and uh, I my comments might be a better wrap up, but. But uh, Brian, somebody from St. Lawrence, South Dakota, um, you know, most people have no clue where that is. I'm from Pipestone, <laughs> Minnesota, just out okay. uh, the other way from Sioux Falls. And I actually turned down a baseball scholarship at Augustana 100 years ago. <laughs> and, and so to see how God has taken you from there and then got your attention using your beautiful wife on a golf course and then to see where you are today only god is capable of doing that so i i just want to to just commend you for for number one your willingness to go to that first bible study um i my testimony is similar to yours i didn't know what i didn't know and and it was the awakening that that was the real gift for me to be, to be able to be sitting here today uh, as a global business coach and in just mentoring people that that are really struggling with compulsive and destructive behaviors. So I'm blessed to be on a mission to save lives and restore relationships while helping guys and gals build businesses across the country. But I just wanted to, to high five you as another Midwesterner of, of roots and, and just say, well done. <laughs> 
it's great to now be in Florida <laughs> for sure uh, for the last 10 no years. Doubt. So I, no question. I just wanted to commend you and, and say, well done. Appreciate Thanks that. Thank you so much. Wow. This is exciting. Yes. And I, Jennifer, I'm sorry. My face was over the top of your screen, so I didn't see your hand. Um, come on in, Jennifer. Love to hear uh, what you do and, and hear what you, comments you have for Brian. Yes. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Jennifer Park. I'm a missionary and also an evangelist. And um, I'm launching my new business, uh, My Coffee Sack, which is Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee. Um, Brian, thank you so much for that, for the golden nuggets of God's word that you shared, and also even your testimony to see how God turned it around where it's now being used as a sword against the weapon, uh, you know, of our enemies. As a, how am I saying it right? Let's see, as a sword, which is a weapon against the enemy. There you go. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Um, one of the things that hit me was um, to become a serious asset for the kingdom of God and a threat to the enemy. That's what impacted me the most, especially as I'm getting ready to go to Cayman and hit the streets in evangelism crusades. And, um, you know, it's a very affluent and also very poor area. So just the boldness to go for it, the follow through and the boldness and to know that this is about kingdom business. Um, so any word on that, that would be, you know, inspirational. That would be great. Yeah, no, I think I think you're spot on. Um, I've traveled around to a lot of different places, countries. Um, I used to go to India a lot, and we would go to the unreached areas, and we always had this this incredible sense of peace because we 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 understood that yes, we carry something, but just like Jesus, he didn't come bringing a message; he came bringing a kingdom. And I think the awareness that you're not just going, um, bringing a message, you're actually bringing something that has keys. Jesus says, I'll give you keys. And those keys are going to help people, you know, allow what that realm allows, the kingdom realm. He said, those keys will open up. You'll bind and loose. And binding is not allowing what's not allowed in his realm. We don't allow it here. What is allowed in his realm we allow it here. And so just to encourage you, as you go in as an ambassador, you're a legally authorized specialist, you know, and that's what an ambassador, he lives by the economy of the one who's sending him, not by the economy he's going into. And so you're going into this economy, not based upon theirs. You're, you're living by the economy of the one who sent you. And just, just, you've got the weapons, you've got everything needed for those moments I just say, open your mouth, the gifts of the spirit, you know, that daily bread, daily bread for me is not, not something of a resource as much as it is words of knowledge, words of wisdom, gift of faith. Every single person on this call at any given moment, when the need calls for it, the word says, when the need calls for it, those things can be activated in our lives. And how, how cool to see the supernatural come into the natural without even having to use, sometimes you, I, I, I go into environments, I don't use the name of Jesus. I don't use one Christianese slogan. You just come in because you're carrying something. That's what, for me, what breakthrough is, I've, I've, I, when I walk into a coffee shop, when I walk into the Jaguar Stadium, when I walk into a grocery store, I am carrying breakthrough with me. And that can sound arrogant, that can sound a lot of different ways, but when it's grounded in humility, it's this awareness. To me, what, the more you're aware of something you carry, it's like somebody that wears too much perfume. The, the more you're aware that you're, you're wearing too much perfume, <laughs> you know what you're, what you're distributing, right? And so when we're aware of what we carry, it actually provides the opportunity to be able to distribute that in those various environments because most people are unaware. And so I just want to make you guys aware, 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 alert, alert. You carry breakthrough. It's part of your inheritance. It's part of who you are. Powerful, powerful. Yeah, yeah, Jennifer liked that. Good luck and prayers for you, Jennifer, as you go. Uh, guys, we've got time for probably one more. Uh, I know if you're hanging in there and you're like, should I, should I not? I really want to know this. Who are you? Unmute. Let's hear from you. Hey, Brian. There she is. 
Oh, we got a couple yes. here. We'll go with, uh, we'll go Briston and then Dr. T and then we'll close it out. Thank you for what you just said. You actually answered the question, but I'm going to pull on you a little bit more. Briston, co-president of the Central Florida Christian Chamber. When you said what you said a while ago, my question was, where do you see God's grace working the most in your journey of breakthrough currently? So my question is, where do you see God's grace working the most in your journey of breakthrough currently? Now, you touched on it a little bit a while ago when you said the awareness of what you carry. But can you just say a little bit more on where do you see God's grace working the most in your journey of breakthrough currently? Yeah, so currently, um, without going into too much detail, I God has convicted me that what he has put in me and on me has to be unburied and distributed. And so even doing a call like this, I'll be straight up with you. I, I have, I've done these, I've done different things in the past, but to be intentional about impacting in this way, it's required me to humble myself and allow him to bring relationships. Like even the relationship with Crystal, that came through Dan. It's 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 humbling myself. I see his grace coming in the form of people, it coming in the form of like um, other people that are hungry and thirsty to see his kingdom come into the marketplace, to see his kingdom come in through a whole, you know a multiplied way. And so that would be it. The the grace right now is on relationships and being aware that when I bump into somebody. That is a strategic bumping in, so to speak. Wow, that's a good, that's wonderful. Thank you oh, for that's a great answer. Uh, Dr. T, final, final question or thought of the day, and then we'll have to release everyone. Brian, thank you so much for your beautiful message today. I'm Dr. Teresa. I specialize in lead generation Facebook ads, and I'm an AI enthusiast after 24 years in healthcare. And the part of the message that hit me the most was God doesn't listen to us when we ask, doesn't listen to us in the perception that we're paupers. But to talk to God from the space of already being whole and accepted and that we're beloved and that we are the new creation or, or a new creation, that that's what really, really hit my heart. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm currently in a relationship with a really lovely guy. And my faith is like this compared to like his. And it's very interesting to walk with him. He doesn't mind it when I tell people, God bless you and amen and stuff like this. And everyone wants to hold, draw a Christian fish. I love it. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I, I, the, the game changer, honestly, for me, I don't remember when it was, was that was that flip was living from approaching him from wholeness and acceptance instead of, I, I realized I, that's why I'll just say this and I'll be done. The Lord's prayer is laid out. The master himself said, when you pray, pray like this. Yes. And you see the five requests. There's an order. Most of us start with the fourth one asking forgiveness. Mm. Ooh, that's powerful. And he, he only remembers, it, technically, he forgets our sin. Right. He only remembers what we bring up. And so when we start with remembering his name first, yes. him first, his yeah. kingdom, his will, we want your bread. Yes. But you go through that. It's a filtering process that allows you then to put your need into its rightful place because the greatest need is the kingdom. He said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. All this other stuff gets added. It is an intentional prayer of alignment that keeps you in perspective of where your sin and your dysfunction and all your inadequacies, where they really fall in the yeah. pecking order. Then the last request is leave me not in a temptation. It's, it's very intentional. That's all I'll say is like, we discipline ourselves to not rush in with our deficiencies and our indebtedness. Try praying from a place of I'm already caught up. And then when you get to your debt, you're like agreeing with what's already been provided versus pleading for something to take place. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> That's, That's pretty good. I'm glad we're recording that. <laughs> that was pretty good. Hey, uh, Brian, Brian, my friend, can you close this out in prayer? We're just going to go ahead and, and end today. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Father, thank you so much for, man, just your goodness. Lord, we're so grateful yeah. we get to participate in this awesome kingdom. Um, we just want you to know how much we love you and how grateful we are for your presence. And we're just, we just pray like Moses prayed um, on the verge of that promised land. Lord, show us your ways that we could just know you better. We just want to know you more and we want to know you better. And then he also asked for your presence. And so, Lord, we ask that your presence would go with us in every place we we step your presence in our families, your presence in our relationships, your presence in our businesses. God, above everything else, we need the anointing. The anointing is what lifts the burden and breaks the yoke. And so, Lord, let your anointing come upon those of us that are embracing really just this mindset. And, and we thank you for the tangible breakthrough that comes through your very presence in Jesus' name. Smear us in your presence. Anoint us. Smear us in yeah. it, Lord. In Thank Jesus' you, name. Lord. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank well, you, it's evident, it's Thank evident you. the work and the prayer you put in because God was with you and worked mightily today, friend. I would jump on that Thank field you. with you anytime because uh, <laughs> you are a warrior. So thank you so much. This was awesome. And uh, if you loved it, watch the replay and share, 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 right. share.